Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be having a look at the Sleeper Omnibus. Um, this book contains the Prelude Point Blank, Sleeper Season 1 and Sleeper Season 2 in one collected edition. This is published by DC's Vertigo and is by Ed Brubacher and Sean Phillips. Alright guys, let's have a closer look at the book itself and then we can come back and discuss it a bit kind of further. Okay, so on the front here we have this kind of gripping hand coming down um, to control our main kind of uh, protagonist. We've got Ed Brubacher, Sean Phillips at the top and um, a couple of kind of quotes here by Virgo. On the side, we've just got the sleeper omnibus um, with Ed Brubacher, Sean Phillips and Vertigo. And then on the back, we have an awesome drawing of Miss Misery. Um, we've got a few more kind of uh, quotes around things and a bit of an idea of, let's see what the kind of book is overall and some of the sort of writers and things. Uh, this was quoted as being uh, $75 US and 85 uh, Canadian and for uh, sort of mature readers overall. Let's get the dust jacket off. So looking at the book itself, again, we've got the uh, sort of grip kind of hand coming down with, it says kind of sleeper here at the top with a kind of couple of uh, looks like kind of people at the top of the kind of sleeper logo and um, on the side again it's a uh, sleeper omnibus uh, every backer and vertigo it's just kind of indented into the plain back kind of cover and then there's uh, there's nothing on the back there so the good thing with most Edward backer books is they actually kind of break down how the layout of the book is even if it is kind of multiple kind of sections. Um, so we've got here at the start, as I say, it's Brubacher um, kind of stuff here. It says point blank. Um, actually, this one just jumps straight in. So we've got point blank uh, chapter one first. As I say, this kind of has its own kind of art style to it almost. Um, the shading doesn't seem quite so uh, classic sort of uh, Sean Phillips. Not for me, anyway. Um, this first section, say point blank, is basically um, sort of a blackened out pages, if you see the side of the book. Um, and then it includes, I say, some of the Wellstorm characters and stuff as well. We then get past that. And we have, as I say, the uh, Sleeper uh, Volume 1. which, as I say, has this kind of lighter tone to it. It's much more, I guess, kind of pastel -y, um, and you've got these kind of very kind of crisp kind of uh, sort of noir kind of highlights, whereas, as I say, if you look at this kind of thing, it's more on kind of full colour, um, and I don't know, it just, it just doesn't have the same feel as this. I see, I really like the book overall, the art's fairly consistent, um, and I really enjoy, you know, both Ed Brubacher's writing, um, and the noir kind of feel of a lot of, uh, sort of Sean Phillips stuff. So, let's skip up to the back and see what kind of extras and things we have in here. So at the back here, I see we've got a Last Words um, by Ed Brubacher. This was written in 2009, and it just explains the premise of how these books kind of came about. This would have probably been better at the start. Um, we've got the tie-in, uh, coup d'etat, um, kind of with the authority guys. Just say it's not part of the main story of this, it's just an extra story. Um, and then after that, we have some of the kind of creation stuff. So we've got some sort of layouts of uh, the different kind of covers and things for the trades. 
this misery kind of art, that's to say the one that's on the back of the, uh, the sleeve. Look at different kind of lettering ideas as to where things would kind of go in that as well. So that's where that hand comes from, the Out in the Cold book. And then we've got some layouts, I see, of, uh, it says, Season 1 issue layouts. And then a couple of sort of variant covers and things from the Point Blank one as well. So a really well built omnibus overall, um, I say unfortunately this one doesn't actually have a table of contents um, but it is fairly easy to tell as I say the different parts stop and start because you do have as I say this darkened kind of section at the start and um, just before we finish up I want to show you guys the, uh, the kind of spine on here as I say it lifts up really well um, overall so I've been really impressed with how well this kind of lays out and with the sort of white outlines that you tend to get in a lot of every backer books you don't really get any gutter loss at all because there's no content in the gutter anyway um, so thumbs up there Um, so, first of all, I just want to say I love this book. I love Ed Brubacker's kind of stories overall, but specifically, this book is one of the few that really stands up there in his kind of writing works. Um, you can tell that he's had, you know, almost sort of too many ideas when writing this book. There's so many possibilities, um, and, you know, at any one time, he could really have went anywhere he really kind of wanted. The story itself was kind of built up in three different kind of sections. As I say, it's point blank as the kind of um, prelude, but actually, um, if you read the, the kind of different kind of uh, sort of extra sections in here where, where the guys are telling you how they kind of um, created the book, Ed kind of tells us that he wrote point blank first. That was what he was commissioned to do. Basically, sort of, a, I want to say it's a four or five issue sort of uh, trade. And that was based on the sort of Wildstorm universe and he basically just wrote this story around um, Tau and um, a couple of the other guys that are the main kind of uh, sleeper story. I'm totally blanking their names right now. Um, I kind of wrote that as a, a kind of an origin story of, um, as I say, this character kind of Tau. Um, after that he was asked to, to create a, a kind of a spin-off story and um, that's what became what is the main kind of sleeper book or if you like season one. Um, so without kind of giving too much away right now, season one um, is basically about um, this secret agent that was um, sort of put undercover into uh, Tao's sort of evil criminal organisation um, and something has happened to uh, Lynch, which is basically his sort of uh, commander and the only person who knew that he was undercover. Um, so now he's basically working as a criminal under this team and has no real way out. Um, and that's basically the main kind of focus on the, the kind of... The, the first kind of sleeper arc. The second sleeper arc, something kind of happens um, and his kind of mentality changes a little kind of bit um, and basically he starts playing the game himself. Um, he, he forgets about being a sort of sleeper agent um, and just kind of works for the bad guys and partly for himself and tries to kind of play the whole kind of game there. Um, and I really enjoyed that, that kind of section as well. Um, Alright guys, I think this is about as much as I can give you before there's really going to be some sort of spoilers here so let's, you know, sort of spoiler warning at this kind of point um, and I'll sort of continue a bit further on here. So, spoilers guys. Um, as I say, season one, um, as I say, the main kind of focus is the fact that these guys have um, sort of powers. The super powered kind of world has kind of started um, and the powers that are um, main kind of antagonist, protagonist, I don't know what you consider him at this point, sleeper agent, 
um, kind of has is basically that he can't feel pain, um, be it um, sort of physical or sort of electrical or other kind of means. He doesn't take that in. Um, his body basically stores it, if you think of it a little bit like um, the sort of suit that they had in the Black Panther movie, it kind of stores it and then it can disperse it back off um, through sort of touch of skin to, to somebody else. Um, they don't actually get the physical damage um, when it disperses off, it is just the pain that goes back. Um, but essentially you go and cause someone to like have a heart attack um, you know, and there'd never be a mark as to that kind of happened. Um, so. This is his power set of how he kind of gets into this group. There's a couple of other people in this group and they have this kind of fun um, thing going on where if they're on missions, they'll kind of stop and ask each other each other's origin stories. Um, so I don't want to spoil the different kind of origin stories themselves, um, but there's a few different characters, um, sort of one's called kind of Bulldog um, and there's really kind of this rough and tumble short kind of guy. There's this bigger guy um, called, uh, oh, what's it called? It's like Massacre or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, he's like bulletproof. Um, there's this uh, Miss Misery girl who uh, essentially is only sort of powerful when she's doing things that are considered wrong. And it's wrong in her head, not wrong by moral standards. So, um, you know, if she sees something as okay, then she will kind of start feeling ill and stuff. Um, so there's a lot of really interesting characters. I, say. I don't want to give you the origins of any of that or anything because I do think you should read the book yourself. Um, but it's a really interesting take on sort of superpowers, how they could potentially work if they're not these idealistic superpowers that everybody has. You know, what if not everybody has a healing power, you know, within their power set? I mean, you imagine all these X-Men who, no matter what kind of power they have, they seem to have a healing power. Well, what if someone like Cyclops, for instance, had laser eyes? But if he didn't, I don't know, kill someone once a day, then he wouldn't heal around the eye, so therefore he's going to die or something, right? You know, stuff like that, you know, like it'd be really interesting to see how that kind of goes, and that's kind of the ideas that this is kind of kind of pushing onto the table there. And then over and above all that, as I say, we have this story of our lost kind of agent, um, and how he's trying to kind of uncover that information and get himself back onto the, the right kind of side. Um, I enjoyed the book overall, it's a very sort of crime noir kind of story, there's sort of sexual elements, um, there's swearing, there's blood, there's killing, this is definitely, you know, for adults. Um, I would say for me, um, and it's I know it's not the order it was written because it was, I say, point blank, then sort of sleeper, um, season one, then season two, um, I would read point blank after reading sleeper one and two. Um, purely because it feels almost more modern, a book, um, and it feels uh, just a slightly different pace and slightly different kind of feel. So I think you could enjoy Sleeper a lot more and it would feel a lot more mysterious to read Sleeper season one and two first and then come back and read point um, sort of blank to pick up that kind of extras. Um, I believe there is also an extra issue in the back of here, which is like a tie-in to um, some sort of authority story or something like that. It's not a tie to this specific story, it's just using these characters in another story. Um, so you don't really need to worry too much about that. Um, there's a few sort of extras at the back of the book and stuff as well, which is really kind of cool. Um, but as I say, it's just a great book overall, a great kind of spy, crime, noir um, kind of story. Um, and... Uh, you know, no puns intended, well, puns intended, whatever, you know, it's a sleeper of a book, right? <laughs> you, know, you should check it out. It's one of Ed Brubaker's best books overall. Um, I'd put it right up there with Criminal and Velvet. Um, and yeah, definitely worth checking out and definitely worth owning in the omnibus format. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this Closer Look video. As always, if you've read Sleeper yourself, let me know in the comments below what you thought of Ed Brubaker's kind of run um, and, you know, what you thought of the art difference between, as I say, the Sleeper kind of books and the uh, sort of point blank kind of book, which kind of order you would prefer to kind of read things in. Um, you know, as always, share this video with your friends so that I can, you know, grow this kind of conversation more. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.